In this video, we're going to input lateral loads into the RCB model. So we're going to input equivalent static earthquake forces and wind forces as calculated to uh, AS 1170.4 and AS slash NZS 1170.2 respectively. Uh, note these will be the equivalent static lateral loads. Uh, dynamic spectral earthquake calculations will be shown in separate videos. As will, the, um, as will the advanced wind calculations to section 6 for wind sensitive structures. So going back to the model that we've been working on the, in the previous videos, for those unfamiliar with it, we'll have a look at it in 3D. So a medium rise residential building about uh, 14 floors above ground with, and a few levels below basement with ground defined at ground level. So before we start inputting our lateral loads, there's a few requirements, a few things that need to be set up first. So the, the main one being we have to have the load, the primary load cases specified where we're going to be putting our lateral, our program calculated lateral forces in. So we have earthquake in the X, earthquake in the Y defined. And note there's only, we only have two primary cases for earthquake, same for wind. The reason why is that we, when we when we combine these forces, we just put a negative value in front of earthquake x. So earthquake x is currently defined, but we'll, when we combine it, we'll just put a negative value to have the loading in the other direction. So we have earthquake and wind primary cases defined. The other thing that we need, we need our dead and live load and we have to have the structure meshed. So for the calculation of earthquake forces, we need the structure's mass, mass hence we need a mesh. We need uh, basically a first pass slab thickness input, as well as our dead and live loads. So this is all, sh we show how to do this in other videos, but that is the requirement. The next thing that we need to set is under settings, models and solvers we need to have defined in load combinations um, a service, basically a service load case for gravity load, in this case G plus 0.3Q, and it must be set here under this frequency analysis tab load combination for gravity load case. So we should, we should have this set so that the software doesn't complain. And this, we'd like to have this mass offset um, ticked on as well. Now, to actually calculate the, um, the lateral loads, we go to the input tab. And that's all, that's all done here under this loading section. So first we'll have a look at the, um, the lateral load locations. So the program will by default calculate uh, the wind and earthquake forces for us. And uh, depending on whether it's wind or earthquake, we'll apply some eccentricity um, based on the requirements of the code. So we see here for our earthquake forces, we automatically have the lateral load calculated to mass center with some eccentricity of 0.1b, b being the dimension of the building. We can also choose to force this to be at the mass center, or use a defined location, or we can spread it evenly over the entire floor. So if we want to see exactly where it's calculated, we go to Tools, and we go to floor centroids. So we see our mass centroid here, and we see that the program automatically shifts the earthquake force centroid to basically a location opposite our shear centroid. So this is the default location, so it's assumed that this will produce the worst case forces in our vertical elements, so that's what the program does automatically. Now, as if, if we want to, we could force it to, to, um, to be in a location that we, that we decide. Um, you know, we can choose to have it in this location or in this location, um, and that will all be shown in just a moment. The wind force centroid basically is applied in the X and Y at the location of the mass centroid. Uh, this is because this building is uh, basically, it's not so high that it has to have the wind force offset by some eccentricity. Uh, but the program, if we were to have a high-rise building, the program would automatically recognize and calculate that offset as per the requirements of AS1170.2. 
So with our, basically, we can see these, we can see the location of the, um, of the, the, we can see the location of the earthquake and wind forces via tools. Now going back to the input tab, how we actually calculate the forces, if we go to input lateral loads, is basically we just need to put in a few inputs and the program calculates it for us. So we specify the primary case that we want to calculate the loading force, so in this case earthquake in the X, select the lateral loading type earthquake and then we just fill in a few values. So we hit complies with BCA table for normal structures and it fills in these values for us. We select the load combination for gravity load, put in all of the relevant design parameters from the earthquake code. And here we can specify where the, uh, the earthquake load is located. So we choose automatically um, in this case, we, because we've only got the two primary cases, but if we define more, we, we have complete control over where we put it. We can even do the um, basically the robustness calculations to uh, basically to the loading code, and to do that, we would, for example, just switch this on, put in some user-defined base shear, and then specify the uh, the location that that lateral loading will be applied. But in this case, we're doing earthquake. We have earthquake in the X. We'll keep all these parameters as they are, and we hit OK. So the program will now calculate equivalent static forces at each level, give us some value, and then fill in this table. So we see the, the lowest level here is lower ground. We do have a few other basement levels modeled, but because we specified ground at lower ground, it means that um, for the purposes of earthquake calculations and wind, everything below lower ground will be ignored. So that was, if we just hit OK, that was set under input, story heights, and here. So all these levels will not have lateral load calculated for them. Now going back to lateral loading, we do the same for the Y. We just simply change this to Y direction, hit OK. And that is now done, and we also see the four centroids. So we now have earthquake in the X and earthquake in the Y calculated. Now we'll put in our wind load. So we change the lateral load type to wind, hit WX, and press this button. So this particular example, we're just going to do the, uh, the simple calculations to basically not to section six, just to the uh, the other sections of S1170. We don't know if this structure is wind sensitive. That will be covered, how we determine that and then how we deal with that will be covered in a separate video. So in this case, we're assuming the structure is non-wind sensitive. We don't need to apply the, um, the requirements of section six, or we, we're assuming that the natural frequency, the first natural frequency of this building is less than one hertz. So we just fill in our relevant values, uh, the design we put in average recurrence intervals, terrain categories, and we just fill in all of the relevant values. And the leeward value, basically we can put in a positive or negative value here, it doesn't matter, the program will take the absolute value and this extra height above roof parapet. So for example, if we were to have some sort of steel awning on our top floor, it will take that extra height and then calculate the moment that it induces. In this case, nothing, so we'll keep it as it is. So wind in the X, we have a long wind in the X direction, and we can also specify a different um, base ground level for the wind action. In this case, we'll keep it as the default lower ground. Hitting OK. Similarly, like it did for the earthquake, we now have equivalent static wind forces. Um, basically, this is in the long wind X direction. The structure is not wind sensitive, so there is no crosswind force calculated. And we repeat the process for the Y direction. The building is basically symmetrical square, so the windward leeward uh, coefficients don't change. So 
basically that is all there is to it. So the equivalent static earthquake forces, the program automatically calculates the lateral load for us. So for earthquake based on the structure's mass and the, uh, the, the and it's put into the the location that is automatically calculated in this case. However, we can change it if we want to. And similarly for wind, it does it automatically based on the geometry of the building. So we've seen that using RCB, uh, we can calculate equivalent static wind and earthquake forces very quickly. Our dynamic spectral and uh, the advanced wind calculations will be covered in separate videos.